Hi, and welcome back to Les's Lab. In this episode, is it really possible to get a genuine yellow DPSS laser for less than $100? Well, this package came today from China, so let's stick it on the bench and take a look. In a previous episode, we took a look at this uh, Melus Grio 85YCA050. Uh, this laser is at 561 nanometers. The marketing blurb says it's yellow, um, but it's actually more like a yellow-green. In fact, 561 sits um, exactly between yellow and green on the spectrum. Um, at the back of this video where I hacked this thing and uh, powered it up, um, someone called Matthias emailed me and let me know of a company called Qingdao Laysense uh, in China that produces allegedly yellow DPSS uh, laser modules. These um, laser 574 nanometers and we've got an output power of around about 8 milliwatts. Um, I looked up these guys and um, it was like $100. Um, it was a bit of a gamble. It's on uh, Alibaba and I'll put in the link down below if anybody's interested and if it actually turns out to be genuinely so. Um, so the package came today. So I'll just unplug this and let's have a look. Um, this is paid for with my own money. Uh, these guys haven't sponsored me or anything. But the curiosity got the better of me and I had to give it a go. It's, it's just too tempting. Um, 574 nanometers is, is almost bang slap in the middle of yellow. Um, I'm not entirely sure how they are managing this for $100. Um, when I got in contact with the seller on Alibaba, in fact, if you've ever bought off Alibaba, you'll know how it works. Um, you email the seller and negotiate a price. Um, they didn't actually have any single mode um, lasers in stock. Um, so they actually sold, offered to sell me this one for $80. Um, so uh, shipping was pretty expensive. It was FedExed. Um, so it was about 50 US dollars in shipping as well. Um, obviously, I'm going to put this through its paces today. Um, if they're claiming greater than 8 milliwatts output power, I'm going to be testing that. And if, more importantly, if they're claiming 574 nanometers, um, I'll definitely be testing that with the homemade spectrometer. Um, so, I've got an anti static bag here. Let's see what we've got. So, this is actually quite a large module. Let's be gentle with it. I don't know what we've got here. So we've evidently got our uh, laser driver. Um, according to the manufacturer's website, it's five volts in. Uh, we could probably reverse engineer that. It looks, looks single-sided. It's all surface mount, single-sided and potted. Um, cool. And then we've got the laser module itself. Now this is really quite a, a chunky module. It's quite large, it has to be said. Um, looks like we've only got two wires in. Um, so we're looking at a high power pump diode. Uh, no faulted out feedback. Um, you know, if, if we're looking into why is it that this is so cheap um, compared with the Melus Grio, I mean, this thing would have run thousands of dollars, right? Um, but as we saw in the previous episode, it's all thermoelectric cooled. We've got temperature sensors, we've got light feedback um, and all the rest of the kit as well. It'll be guaranteed not to mold hop. It'll be uh, guaranteed single wavelength, all the rest of it. Um, might not be such guarantees with this. I've um, got a 5 volt power supply, I'll just turn it on and we'll have our first look. So the laser's powered on, and that does look to me to be distinctly yellow. Absolutely fantastic. Um, I can't actually see the multi-mode that they're talking about. Um, obviously, we're going to fire this on the optical bench and maybe look at the beam quality over a distance, but that is absolutely superb. That is a brilliant, brilliant shade of yellow. So I've got my optical breadboard set up here. I've got my Raspberry Pi spectrometer pointed at my poor man's Spectralon target. Uh, this target's actually wrapped in PTFE, uh, which is much, much cheaper than Spectralon. Um, I've got th three lasers set up in total. I've got the new yellow laser from um, Alibaba. 
At the back I've got a 632.8 nanometer uh, which is red helium neon laser and I've got the 561 nanometer Mellers Griot um, yellow green you know sort of lime green laser. Um, these are all bounced off of mirrors onto my target um, except for the yellow laser which is currently blocked and we can see our two peaks um, on the spectrometer software there so we've got a peak at 561 uh, which is the Mellus Griot and we've got a peak at 633 which is our helium neon laser. Let's have a look at the beams for these so there's the red output from the helium neon laser there's the lime green um, marketed as yellow um, Mellus Griot laser and here's the Alibaba um, special yellow laser um, and if you compare these two I mean it's clear um, the difference we've got lime green there bright yellow there Anyway, let's, uh, let's remove the beam block and take a look at the spectrometer software. So um, we can see a new peak has just appeared at 572 nanometers. So it's most assuredly um, lasing where it should be, uh, more or less. Um, advertised as 574, but there's quite a bit of variation on the website. Um, but yes, most assuredly yellow. It's, it's right there, uh, clear as day. Um, about the little setup here, uh, in the middle I have a, an optical element, um, this is a uh, output coupler from a large frame argon ion laser. Um, the purpose of this is to just dump most of the yellow beam um, from the new laser because it outputs around about, uh, well it, it says 8 milliwatts uh, and we'll test that shortly. Uh, so we want to dump as much of that as possible before it gets to the target so that we don't saturate the sensor. Um, but yeah, excellent. Uh, we could take peak hold off and they'll just dance around a little bit. Um, it would be interesting to see if the wavelength of the new laser actually drifts um, because if it does it might imply that it's a directly doubled um, diode setup. Um, but yeah, pretty cool uh, and absolutely yellow. Um, awesome. Since we've got this bench set up we'll just do a quick gratuitous uh, beam through the smoke shop because why not? Absolutely fantastic. Awesome. So while we're about it, we might as well measure our output powers. I've got a coherent laser check here. Um, in order to set this up correctly, we switch the switch at the end there to wavelength and press in the button and we can see it reads 633. We'll switch it back to power and then we'll just take our measurements. We just have to hold in the button for a couple of seconds. So we're reading 2.06 milliwatts, which is probably around about right for a small helium neon laser. Uh, let's change the wavelength uh, to measure this. So this is 561. I've overshot. So 561 nanometers, we'll switch back to power. And we'll measure this one. And that reads about 1.79 milliwatts for the Mellus Griot. Um, as I explained before, um, I built my own driver for this, so I didn't want to push it too hard and try and attempt to get 50 milliwatts out, but two milliwatts will do. Um, so now we need uh, 572. There's 572, and we will go and measure our yellow laser. And we're actually reading 9.39 milliwatts, um, which is really, really awesome. That's well within the specifications that they advertise on the site. So if you're in the market for a, an actual genuine yellow DPSS laser, um, I'd highly recommend this. I mean, $100 um, and we've got a genuine yellow DPSS laser. So if you're interested in these things for light shows or uh, maybe you want to do a little bit of spectroscopy or whatever, you know, a bit of fluorescent spectroscopy, um, highly recommend it. A um, few things I don't know about this because, you know, I've literally unpackaged it here and set it up and, and done some tests. I don't know how long it lasts. Um, I haven't really had any time to measure like long-term stability of the output. Um, it seems stable on the spectrometer software there. It's just sitting there uh, nice as you like. Uh, it doesn't seem to be fluctuating too much. 
the case um, doesn't appear to get too warm it gets warm but you know blood heat um, body heat something like that um, doesn't appear to overheat and I've not even bothered uh, heat sinking it um, yeah I've no idea of what the long-term lifetime of these things are it doesn't seem to say on the manufacturer's website but it's a hundred bucks it's it's you know it's practically a throwaway laser at that kind of price and for yellow which is a really really unusual wavelength absolutely fantastic once again, the money for this video came out of my own back pocket. Um, I spent um, the $80 plus 50 shipping on the, on the laser from Qingdao License. Um, they didn't cut me any special deal. Uh, they're not paying for any aspect of this video. Uh, the review is as it is. If it had been terrible, you guys would be seeing terrible right now, um, but it's not. Um, I will link them in down below. Um, you know, feel free to go and take a look. And if it's something that will interest you, um, I would say definitely go for it. Thanks for watching this episode of Leslie's Lab. If you want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys next time.